Body proportions and squatting. Body proportions can significantly impact the biomechanics and efficiency of performing a squat. Key body parts involved in this include the tibia, shin bone, the femur, thigh bone, and the torso. Individuals with longer femurs relative to their tibia and torso often find squatting more challenging. They may need to lean their torso forward more to maintain balance. For example, these two exercisers have the same length of tibia and torso, but one has a longer thigh. Notice the difference in the angle created between the thigh and the torso. In this case, any attempt to lift the torso will cause the trainee to fall backward. On the left, we can see an exerciser with a proportionally long femur compared to a short tibia and short torso. Those with proportionally shorter femurs or long tibia tend to keep their torso more upright during squatting. A short femur is less than 25% of the total height. This trainee has a relatively long tibia compared to the femur, so she can keep her torso upright. Torso length and squatting. The length of the torso in relation to the length of the legs is also an essential parameter in the squat. A longer torso helps maintain an upright position. For example, two trainees of the same height, one with a long torso and short legs, and the other with a short torso and long legs. A shorter torso can make it harder to stay upright. Conversely, a longer torso and short legs are an ideal body type for squatting. A challenging body structure for squatting is both a long femur, or long legs, and a short torso. In addition, there are also biomechanical differences between tall and short trainees. Taller lifters generally have more difficulty with the back squat than their shorter peers. Longer limb lengths, greater moment arm, longer distance of the bar, and the like. What is the solution? First, widening the stance can change the anterior-posterior positioning of the thighs, affecting the torso's position and angle relative to the thighs, and creating shorter anterior-posterior length during the squat. Another solution is heel elevation. Wearing weightlifting shoes with an elevated heel or placing small plates under the heels can improve squat depth and balance, particularly for individuals with limited ankle mobility or longer femurs. Another option is to shift the weight forward, such as in the front squat, allowing the trainee to maintain a more upright position. In the longer term, it is desirable to work on the mobility of the ankle joint that will allow the knees to slide forward without lifting the heels. In conclusion, the body's structure affects the ability to perform squats. Exercisers with a long thigh and a short torso will experience greater difficulty in staying upright. Listen to your body and use a variation that suits it. Whether it is widening your stance, raising the heels, improving mobility, or performing variations such as a front squat or goblet squat and the like. In this example, we can observe the contrast in proportions. Both are almost the same height, but the lengths of the femur and the torso are substantially different. A long femur and a short torso cause the trainee to lean forward. A short femur relative to a long tibia and a long torso facilitates a deep squat.